Putting night vision on an RC car allows me to explore some pretty sketchy areas. Things like creepy tunnels, flooded swamp-like areas, and even random dark places at nighttime that I wouldn't normally want to walk around. My son and I use these primarily on our crawlers, our Defender and the TRX-6 because it works amazingly well. But today, we also want to see what happens when we put it on the really fast off-road stuff. One of the coolest things is that we can set up in one area and drive all over the park or neighborhood woods wherever it is we want to explore without ever leaving our seats and with this particular setup we can do this at nighttime and in dark areas because we're using an ultra low light camera if you look at this footage from my smartphone you can see just how dark it is on this camera but when you look at the monitor here that shows how much the camera on the car is actually seeing my smartphone was actually aimed at my car and you can't see it at all and as I mentioned, this is primarily designed for these crawlers because they are very off-road capable, a good size to explore random areas, and they're a little bit slower than this really fast stuff that may struggle, but we're still gonna see what happens on those. The crawlers are probably the only cars we have that can make it through this flooded swamp-like area without repeatedly getting stuck, and there's absolutely no way I wanna walk through that nonsense to pick up an RC car that I got wedged in some tree branches, so we are gonna stick to these crawlers. I can explore what's on the other side of a flooded sidewalk without actually having to walk through it. And I can also chase random creatures around at nighttime. I was looking all over the place for these possums I had seen earlier. I uh, didn't really have that much luck, but we will find them. The specific camera I'm using here is a Foxier Mini Cat 3. And it's what's known as a starlight camera because it can see with only starlight, meaning you don't need a moon or anything. It is insanely sensitive. Now there are multiple types of night vision technologies and this just barely qualifies because it is so good in low light conditions. It's also the simplest and the cheapest, but it's absolutely perfect if you're doing things like blasting through disgusting water and rolling over repeatedly because you don't know how to drive. But it's great because it allows you to drive normally during the daytime. A lot of night vision technologies will be a really poor image quality during the daytime. But in this case, since it actually just sees visible light, it looks like a regular camera. Night vision in general just means the ability to see in night conditions or ultra low light conditions. But when it comes to like military grade technologies, there's a lot of them out there. So it's important to understand what those are. The light that we see with our eyes is the visible portion of the electromagnetic spectrum which is about a 400 to 700 nanometer wavelength and just beyond this is near infrared and shortwave infrared but the important thing to know is that everything from visible to shortwave infrared requires some source to illuminate the scene whether it's the moon stars or an illuminator and many of the military grade setups for ultra low light night vision will use something called an image intensifier tube this is not even close to that level but it does perform really well in bright conditions, so there's that trade-off. If we go way beyond the shortwave infrared, we get into what's known as thermal imaging, which is my absolute favorite. It allows you to do crazy things like I can see my pet's footprints, I can see my footprints as I walk around, and I can even see where my dog's been laying because his heat is dumped into the floor. You can also see thermal loads on electronics, which is actually what I did to improve the heat sink placement on the video transmitter board in this project. But more importantly, thermal imagers are seeing radiated heat from the source, so they don't need external illumination. And if you're using an illuminator to supplement your night vision, you will stand out like a sore thumb to anyone else using night vision because that illuminator will look like a spotlight to them. And the majority of commercial systems out there are in the long wave category. That's what you see these videos from. It's one of my FLIR long wave images Good thermal imaging systems are very expensive. To get the same resolution and frame rate as my $40 Starlight camera, 
I would have to spend four to five thousand dollars for a thermal camera. And because thermal imaging doesn't show color or anything, I would still want to use the visible light camera during the daytime, so I'd have to run two cameras if I were running a thermal system. This camera is paired with a video transmitter that puts out anywhere from 25 to 800 milliwatts on the 5.8 gigahertz RF band. With a relatively clear line of sight, I'll get several hundred feet if not more of range, but as I get deeper and deeper into treed areas, the signal begins to degrade pretty quickly because 5.8 gigahertz really doesn't penetrate foliage that well. And the system is designed with its own battery to be completely standalone so I can pop it off of vehicles and switch it to whatever car I want, which brings us to the Creighton EXB. I wanted to know what would happen at much higher speeds and off-road because I had a pretty good feeling that without this thing being stabilized, it was gonna be pretty hard to control. And so I bolted it to the rear wing and just sent it all over this field here. And if you look at the FPV footage, it's absolutely nauseating because the camera is just shaking all over the place. And like I mentioned, there is no gimbal stabilizer on the setup yet. So it would be almost 100% useless to try and use this to control these high speed applications. Unless if you're on a really smooth surface. On the smooth surfaces, it worked pretty good. But we'll probably stick to crawlers and maybe road vehicles for future uses on this guy. When I'm running this thing, I'm usually running it on a monitor, even though you can use goggles, and that's because I don't want to be in some creepy dark place with a blindfold on, and it also gives me better situational awareness. And you should know that the video quality you're going to get off of the FPV camera isn't going to be remotely close to like a GoPro or an Insta360 that I use to record the other stuff, but it is perfectly sufficient to navigate. It's also important to remember that you can get yourself into trouble if you go too far with these FPV setups, especially if it's somewhere you don't want to walk, like these nasty flooded areas, because I had to repeatedly flip this car back over because I got a little too aggressive on the throttle and they have a very high center of gravity. So make sure wherever you're going, you have a plan to recover if you do crash. To get more range, you can go to a different frequency video transmitter and receiver. And I'll probably add that later so I can go deeper into treat areas and I can maybe get a mile or two of range away from me and really get out there and explore even weirder areas. If you have any questions, please let me know. Also, there are a lot of gatekeepers out there of the term night vision. Like I said, night vision is a very broad term and there's different technologies of night vision. This one just happens to be the simplest and the most cost effective, but it does a great job. If you have any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, I can't wait for the next project.